on your project, most important thing in the world, read it. Don't pretend. Don't say, oh, yeah, yeah, I read that thing. No. you got to know. So tell me how your song can be used. If you're walking down the street, is it bleeding out of a store? Is it in a car driving by around the corner? Um, is it a lot of times we'll have, you know, somebody's uh, out working right now or at a Christmas party, the guy's putting the vinyl onto the roof of them. I've got to make sure that that vinyl matches the recording that I'm using. Right? And I have to get the approval. I've got to tell the record company, hey, I'm showing the label. Because that's something that I don't know. I can't just you know, throw down a David Bowie label and I end up losing, you know, So that's, you've got to keep a lot of music. Uh, music on headphones happens all the time. You're on a call, someone's got their, you know, headphones hanging down here, you can hear it bleeding out. Um, TV newsreel. You've got stuff from 1940, they're showing a news clip, they're showing a newsreel. I might be able to find what music they're playing. It's never going to happen. So uh, there's different companies out there that I know that'll say, hey, can you get something that matches that? And then we have the editor sort of make it work. Cell phone ringtones. Not as bad as it used to be, but one was really, really popular. Um, improvising on set. Oh my God. So a lot of times, especially if you're working on certain projects, you know that the actor is they'll just, it's really, so if you want to watch the Jamie's, you want to see, hey, 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 that's a slow movie, you can't take that, you can't use that clip. Because it's going to cost over $1,000 to be the So go find another one. So that's when you sort of have to sort of, part of my job also is working with people in the productions. So we know what you're doing. I'm going to make sure that you're not creating something new that I can't do. So it's part of the job is not only dealing with the music and the business side, but it's also dealing with the people who are working on the projects. Making sure that I have a really good communication that they're going to be able to tell me what they're up to. Does that make sense? Just real quick in regards to that um, yeah. second to last point, because that was something I was just talking about earlier. It's never occurred to me about, like, so what are this, what's the standard in terms of, like, if someone's just walking down the street and they whistle a tune for a second, or they sing a one, one hit or a verse from something, like, how far do they have to go into it before you have to clear it? Or is it just instantaneous? Like, so the second a recognizable melody comes out, essentially, Instant. that's kind of what, okay, interesting. Instant. Wow. So it's almost you're almost like doing continuity on you're almost like, no, oh, you can't say this here because oh, this happens. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. In the nicest way possible, I Right, right. Um, I can't, I can't do that. Very cool. Um, and a lot of times they'll go back and say to the director or they'll say to the, you know, hey, do you have another take? Um, ask the actor who's singing. Mm -hmm. I'm working on a film right now where a well known actor is humming. I'm like, what is he humming? Fly the Valkyrie. Wow. I'd be like, cool, fun, public domain, same way. <laughs> but if he's coming back and saying that that's what it is, I'm taking your word for it, I'm signing off on it. Uh, when I watched it, I couldn't tell what it was, which was fine. But if he wants to think about it, I'll um, Lyrics on the screen. So songs and properties and intellectual properties and movies, everyone has a different, there's things that have different rights. So, Lyrics on screen, karaoke with one last name, or you're looking at somebody's sheet music, that's a completely separate right. That's called a print right. And I have to go to the music publisher and say, hey, I'm going to be reprinting your lyrics. I need to get that approved. Completely different right. If I want to use a film to the title of a song, uh, that's not about to do. Or uh, pretty Woman, you have to get the approval from the music company to do that, and it costs you money. That's for using the text. Using the title. No, I changed. The, sorry, I changed the title. title. So, so even if it's like a, in the script they're referencing a song? So if you're reading a script,
it and they say, oh, we'll like the song for you women, or the song, you know, what's a lot about to do with it, you don't have to play that. It's just tribal dialogue, you just read something. And they will tell you that you can't, you don't have, you can, a title cannot be copyrighted, so you can't take a song title and copyright it, but I mean, the property of the itself, the actual itself, lyrics right. or the music is copyrighted. But if you use the song for you women in the movie, you have to If you use the song, what's a lot about to do with it in the movie, you have to pay. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Sorry. Five seconds. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, it needs to be three seconds. Oh, no. oh that's what it is. I argue. I argue all the time. No, you can't. Because think of it this way. If, like, you know, you know the song Duke of Earl? Right. Three beats. You know exactly what it is by the second beat, you know what it is. Somebody wrote that. It's their copywritten piece of material. The guy should be made for it. You know what I mean? So you can't. You wouldn't want someone stealing your music. Or you're writing or whatever it is. You don't want that. You can't remember, but you want to protect people's copyrights. That's what this is all about. Okay. Good question. So uh, the dialogue specifies uh, like. The actual dialogue happening is, oh, what's your favorite song? And they say a song and an artist's name, and there's pure dialogue that they'll use. Fine. Your song. Fine. But if they say, what's your favorite song? They're like, oh, Good Day Sunshine. You know, Good Day Sunshine. Sorry. Out, because you don't have 200,000 on. Okay. How's the music? This is a little bit more of the, it's using the background, it's a visual vocal. Remember, if you have somebody, on the screen, who's actually singing a song. You're going to have, if you can't get the rights to that song, you're going to have to cut that scene out of it. There's no way you can fake it. So, this is familiar with the film business. This is what we do in pre production, so we do it before they start shooting. So, if anything that is going on camera, like showing the record label, having somebody sing, have somebody, I don't know, doing karaoke. You have to make sure you have all those rights to that music before you even start shooting the same. Okay? A lot of the other stuff you can do in the background, I don't care. After they've shot the scene, the movie's done, they're in the editing room, they're cutting away, they're like, oh, we need music to play now, the restaurant speakers, what should we put in there? That you can do six months later. That you don't need for the actual shoot. Uh, what else do you want here? Timing. Sometimes you'll have somebody talking on the phone, or you just play. And then they'll cut away, and we'll have Chris working on the computer, and then they'll come back to me. So that means it's been interrupted. It's still the same use, but it's been interrupted. So I say, okay, this is interrupted. So the first use is 10 seconds, the second use is a minute. Mm -hmm. And then they sort of uh, have to sort of tell people exactly how to do it. There are change in here, this is fun. So you technically don't have the rights to change lyrics to anything or to edit a song. So let's say you want you like the chorus lots and you do like three choruses and cut out the bridge. You don't have the right to do that. It's some of these popular material. So you have to be smart about it. A lot of times I don't want to know about it. I can watch it and say, bad edit. Why did you do this? Sometimes I'll call the music company and say, hey, just want to let you know we edited a little bit to work with the dialogue or to lower the volume a little bit so we have, so we have to be very nice now and let them know what you're planning on doing with them. Yeah. Just real quick, I, don't, I have no idea what this pops in my head, but what, how do you handle like really widely known parodies of so like for some reason this pops in my head, you think about like Jingle Bells, Batman Smells, Robin Lady, right. that sort of thing, like that's like a broadening version of that song, but it's not. Weird Al, Yankovic is a very famous right, right. Al, Weird Al, but Good he, point. his stuff is always, if it's, Big parody, like obviously making fun of it. It falls under a fair use ruling, gotcha. and it's very, I don't say subjective, but it's it's a known thing and it's fine. And usually I'll go to an attorney and say, Is this fair use? Can I say this is fair use? Wasn't well, he brought into court a few times about this? I feel like in the 90s when he was really big, he was brought into court over something, right? Some There's a famous video one, but he's done a few of them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But for the most part, they can start to be fair use. 
do have to specify if there's like breaks, like we just mentioned, if they're using it for like first and second, and then there's a quote, I mean, and then there's dialogue, and then they're using it at the end. Do you specify them in the quote? Well, right, you so, so a lot of times what will happen, let's say I'm going to use a song, um, it's important, it's like, let's say it's the love song between the couple, and they're having dinner, and they hear it for the first time, oh, I love that song, it's going to be our song. Well, then they'll play it like three or four different times throughout the course of the film. They'll use it as an end title. They'll use it, you know, oh look, it's playing on the radio when we woke up, you know, it'll be playing at different times. What I'll say is it's being used three different times, different scenes throughout the movie. Mm -hmm. Sometimes I'll do it as a cumulative timing, depending upon, I'll say, you know, for a total of 10 seconds total over three uses. And sometimes they'll say, well, give me exact usages on each of them. So I'm like, oh, scene A, they're using it for 10 seconds. Scene B will be for a minute. So then I switch to that. Does that make sense? Yeah. Sorry, real quick. Do you, ever, okay. do you ever encounter issues with that sort of thing where, like, that negotiation and all that stuff has been decided, and then at the last minute they do, like, a mixed edit or a change, with this, and then that sequencing changes? How do you accommodate for that? Do you have to go back and revise anything, or do you give them updated cue sheets or whatever? Is that kind of the premise? This whole job is all about communication. Yeah, yeah. And remember, I have to make, I have to work with the record company, because I'm a music company. And they want me, because I pay them money. So they're going to be nice to me. I have to be nice to them, because I want their product. So I always tell everyone, it doesn't behoove you to be nasty in this business. You are nice, you are friendly, listen, you're like, okay, what can I do? This is what I want, this is what I need. And this is the art of negotiation is, I think it's on my this one. Ah, okay, let's talk about requesting stuff, and then we'll get negotiation. So, quickly we can go through this. Do you want it worldwide? Do you want it for US and Canada? Do you want it for YouTube only? Is it going on for two weeks? If you have a, uh, is what media is it going on? Where, you know, where is this thing being shown? That's all going to make a difference when you're getting your rights to your song. Let's talk about most favorite nations. Everyone's favorite. What does that mean? Most favorite nations. Big legal term. So simple. You basically want to get the same thing as the next time. So, Lenny McCartney wants to make the same thing that Universal, that Apple Records is getting. So they're going to say, here's our quote, $100,000. I want to make sure the record company is getting the same thing, so I'm going to be MF fed with the record company. Okay? Another time you do it, you've got five songwriters, five different publishers to go down. I want $10,000 MF fed with all my co publishers. So everyone's going to share in the same pool. They want to make sure that nobody's getting paid more than the next guy. Okay? It is do it amongst publishing and the, you can do it, you can do it against the publishing and the record company. You can do it against the songwriters amongst themselves. So right now I'm working on a film where I've got a very big piece of music. We couldn't afford the original recording. So I went to KTEL. You guys remember KTEL? Uh -huh. It's like a re record company. And so they've got it's like some 70s band. And I said, hey, do you have a recording of this done by the same artist? But that you know, it's like a, it's not owned by the big record company, it's like another version. And they said, sure. So if my quote is $100,000 on the production side, I didn't want that on the beautiful version. So I said, can you not put an MFN on your quote? So I'm getting it for $100,000 on one side and $12,000 on the other side. So sometimes you, you learn little tricks along the way to save money. It sounds the same, the director's happy, but it sounds similar. But the same artist, he just did a re recording in like the 80s as opposed to the original from the 60s. And therefore, I've erased the MFN provision. That makes sense to everybody? It's a little screwy with the vision. Um, okay, next um, Okay, what does everyone know about negotiating? Everyone wants to be happy, right? I want you to get the best of can, I want you to feel good about it. I want to feel good about it. Remember, I'm serving my master, which is the film company, my budget, 
Um, I want to have a good reputation. I want the record companies to like me. You know, I, I, I serve sort of many masters, actually. So, a lot of times they're going to say to me, well, how much do you want for this? So this is where you start to do a little soft shoe. Well, I know that I have $20,000 to spend for this one spot. And I'll sit there and I suggest $15,000. So that way, in my mind, I have room to go up and they come back up. Mm -hmm. The music owner is just going to say, I really want to get a 20, so I'm going to ask for 25. And then I'll come down if they don't lend more money. So you sort of do this whole little you do a dance. I mean, it's, it's a dance. I can't have to play the dance. Uh, but again, usually you're dealing with people that you know. And sometimes we just cut through and like, okay, how much you got? Like, I got 15. You're like, okay, how about 17, five? Like, you know, it just. Um, so last, sometimes someone will give you a quote for like $50,000. And they'll be like, it's too high, I'll tell you what, let me go back, and this is true, I'll go back and say, let me talk to the creative team, da 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 I don't want to negotiate it right now, but let me just sit on it. I can't say yes, I can't say no, we may replace it if it's too much, too little, whatever. So sometimes what I'll do, I'll go back to my editor, who's cutting the music into the film, and I'll be like, what's the timing on this thing now? Because I originally thought it was two minutes, oh, can you read it? Now that thing's only 30 seconds. Then that gives me something to go back and say, hey, we've changed the timing so much, can you go back and revisit your fee and see if you can give me a lower fee? And they always will. So go back with ammunition. Go back with something. Just don't do it because you're being smart. I mean, you're going to be Um, Never threaten that you're going to drop a song. You'll have anger. Because sometimes the director, I'm working on a movie, and I love this guy, and he's a really good director. He's, and I didn't know this until I was very deep in it. He's from, he's from Greek. And so he kept all the music he selected over like Greek people. Not that we would know if they were Greek heritage or ancestors. I didn't know. I'm thinking, why is he holding on to this song? It doesn't make any sense. It doesn't really fit in your life. Oh, yes, he's Greek. What? And then it occurred to me, like, everything he was like, oh my god! He's just like this big dude who wants to have all he just wants to give love to all his friends. And that is so funny. So, I... Because he might not go back. Yeah, I have to you know, I have to ask him. But he's a big guy, the movie's great. I can't complain, but I'm thinking, why is he going to Why? Now I get it. Everyone has their own music for mine, so I can't um, So I said, well, why don't you drop that song? It's just so much more money than everything else. And I couldn't use it. You know, a lot of times you want it as a negotiator, you're like, listen, if you have it that price, I can't use it, we're going to drop it out. Only say that at the end And so when I went back and checked with the creative team, they're like, oh, no, 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 he's not dropping that one. That's a great guy. I'm like, <laughs> so, you know, you have to start the, I know you got to play along. Um, this is actually really a good little tip here. So if you've got a song, and, you know, maybe the original is by, I don't know, Cat Stevens or whatever, and you're like, who else covered it? Maybe there's a really good cool cover out there, but we don't know what that is. So a lot of times I'll ask the music publishing, the songwriting song, and I'll say, hey, who else covered this? Or um, any of that research that we did, ASCAP or anywhere else, you can say, I mean, who else covered the song? Maybe there's another one that makes more sense. If the song still has the same emotional feel, it has the same, you know, lyrics that the director wanted. But, you know, maybe there's something hipper, maybe there's something moodier, maybe there's something that will, you know, match with it. Um, so that's also kind of an example. Um, and again, stickers are really cool. Same artist, just done it a different time. A lot of these guys, going back to, I work on a big it's a hip-hop documentary. And these are, you know, I mean, I'm sorry, it was rap music. Like, big old rap guys. Oh, punk. Sorry. Punk documentary. <laughs> 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 oh, no. So I, um, I started to get to know some of these guys because a lot of them have gotten the terms of rap. It's like, are you doing the record label? Are you doing the record label? Are you doing the record label? Are you doing the 
graphic label, they hadn't been recouped. So basically what happens is they would have a label, they're going out on tour, and they're going to hand you $2 million for the tour. And then like touring, you're selling records, you're selling merchandise, you're selling whatever you're selling. And that money, a big portion of it goes back to the record label since they aren't to do the money for the So if the record company hasn't recouped their investment, they're still taking larger shares out of your income as it comes in. So they consider seed money to be income coming in. So a lot of these guys, I'd say 80s, you know, this comes up as 80s. So I started to talk to these guys, and they're like, you know, they're still tattooed, you know, from here, skateboarded, but they have no money. So I'll say, do you have your own recording? Yes, great. I'll write the check to you. I don't need to send it to them. And they think you're a hero. And I feel like I'm helping them. So a lot of times, if I have the opportunity, I'll say, do you have a hero? Because the music's being used, everyone's happy, taking care of some of the guys that are kind of lost in the system. Um, the system's much more sophisticated now, and it's not as, I don't want to say abusive, but like not as yeah. So it's, it's changed a lot, thank God. So, and, and the business has become more sophisticated and much more transparent. So, you know, sometimes you still want to write some of the bills if I can. Um, flexibility. Um, here's a sample request letter. Yeah. Um, so, uh, as an example, just to make sure I'm check following, the situation like Taylor Swift and Scooter Bond purchasing her catalog and then going and reporting it. In a situation like that, um, I guess it would be technically built in a relationship first, like if you have a better relationship with whoever owns those original versions, or if it's a better relationship with the, whoever owns the new recordings of them. Um, do you have to deal with both sides because they were re-recorded? No. Okay. So that's what I'm saying. You go back and you find the version you are Team Swift, and you think that she was screwed over, and the recording is a little bit different. Mm -hmm. I don't understand. I don't know. Um, you can say, you know what? I want this one. If you want the original one, or you're taking a label, that's what you have to use. Then you go with the screw you know, the big machine. So it's you just have to sort of. Sick of having rats trying to get the pump rollers. So I have a question about that. When things are secret, what, when you're getting those samples through, is it typically through, like, I'm thinking, like, okay, Dance is Paradise, for example, Speaking on the Are you clearing the. Is it the publishing and the. Like, it keeps all the. Okay. You know what I'm saying? I exactly what you're saying. So there's something called. Uh, okay, I don't want to say this. So sample clearance, if it's a big song, the labels have already done it for you. So I can, get, I can go and call Universal and they say, oh, this has a Stevie Wonder sample in it, you have to go to Sony separately. Or they'll say, this includes the master sample. So there's publishing samples, remember, which will just be the lyrics. There'll be master samples, which will be the Stevie Wonder harmonica line that's being used. That's the actual recording. So there, you have to figure out, you know, they will tell you. If it's a big song, they're going to tell you, there's a master sample in there, there's a publishing sample in there, you know, you have to sort of do this again. I don't know if this is going too deep, but could you give like a quick overview of quick, like what a quick claim is? Quick claim? Yeah, regarding samples. Bottom line, any record company, I mean, I'm sorry, any studio, big studio, will not accept a so basically what it's saying is that we will go ahead and we don't know who has that sample. So we'll just go ahead and quickly say it's okay. And if they come back and maybe we'll put money in an escrow account, or we'll sort of figure it out for you later. Um, or we'll have somebody sign off and say, we really don't have the rights, but we want to use the song. So no studio will allow it. They just don't. And you know what? It's not working. Because again, Joey the Pizza Guy can come back from prison and say, hey, <laughs> take this out of your movie. I'm enjoying the entire picture. You have to take it off all the theaters. You have to take it off all of Netflix. You're screwed. So, don't bother. Not worth it. There's 
other reason. And I always tell people, there's always another sign. It's just, it's not worth my time. It's not worth the anxiety. It's not worth the gray hair. It's just, there's always another sign. Yeah. So going back to catalogs, mm -hmm. if, let's say, like Justin Timberlake or Future just sold their entire catalogs, does that mean that you're no longer interfacing with the artist? You're strictly talking to whoever they sold the catalogs? You rarely ever talk to artists. Oh, never. Okay. Okay. You always talk about them. Why would? Well, I was gonna say like <laughs> that Beyonce example when yeah. the police had like her line used or something in the okay. background of her milkshake song and yeah. their song. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And she was like going off about it because yeah. I guess like they, Beyonce didn't appear with her or something. Like, but it's originally like a a Pharrell song. To produce it so and basically, what will happen is let's say you're a songwriter and you love this lyric line, but there's some Post to doing the ideal words, you play front, hey, I love that, it's great. You can go ahead and come up with a, let's have our attorney smile, and I'll give you 20% of the song. That's basically what happened. I was clearing something, and I couldn't figure out why the song was so expensive, and I'm trying to figure out, and I see that Pete Townsend was one of the songwriters, he's one of the guys who did it. And I thought, ah, there must be a clue sample. Oh my god, Pete Townsend had 90% of the song. They used like three words of this. Uh, and I'm thinking, that guy needs a new attorney. But it's the who. You know, I can argue with the who. It's the who. So some people are just willing, but that's what is supposed to happen, is that the songwriters, representatives, attorneys, whatever, will negotiate, and they'll come up with a grant of copyright, and they'll give up some of the percentage to the piece of music that they have sampled into. Or some of the examples like we'll have like feature artists. So it'll be like, you know, Pharrell singing, featuring Mark Ronson, or whatever it is. A lot of times it'll be two different labels. So I have to go to one label for this portion of it and this record label for other portion. And it's two different places. Yeah. I mean that's just the way you know, I'm, you know, I'm working on a project right now, we're releasing a song, and it's Warner Brothers owns it for the U.S. and Canada. Sony owns it for the rest of the world, the recording. So a lot of times these artists, especially early in their whatever, they would sell off portions of their catalog to make some money. So a lot of times they'll be like, I'm going to go ahead and sell my rights to Canada for $10,000 advance because I haven't put it in or I'm going to go ahead and sell off my rights to Japan only. So it's like, so for people like me, it's a little complicated. But yeah. So how much does that complication factor in the choice of which music you play? Like at what at what point is the effort so big that you say let's just swap this? <laughs> in my twenties, I didn't care how to die, and I would go chase like hell. Now I'm like, yeah, not so much. <laughs> To be honest with you, it's all about keeping your director happy. If he really, really wants it, then I keep thinking that he did it. But there is a point, and this happens a lot with younger songwriters who are starting in the business, and they don't have their craft together. It makes it so much harder for me, and I'm really going to say, you know what? I think it's not worth the time. Again, there's another piece of music out there that I can get that's so much easier that will be the same, have the same feel, it's just easier. So I always tell you guys, you need to figure out together. Have your infrastructure, have your metadata, have all the stuff in place so when people like me can get a phone call, this is the end. I was digging online, there was fans, I tell you, I never heard of them, which is fine, there's a ton of stuff I don't know. And I'm thinking, who is this guy? And I get this email about, like, you know, I'll send it to the generic info site. You get a bounce back. Thank you so much for your email. If the stars align and it's in, and if we feel like this is worthy of our time and interest, then the heavens will return. And I'm thinking, are you kidding me? So I'm like, okay. And I said it a lot. I'm like, look like we found the hippie label, you know, and I pass it along and everyone's giggling. And of course, the director has to have it. So then I start digging deeper and you know, for booking, go to this person. So I'm sending an email to like a CAA in the UK. I'm sending it to a PR person in like Minnesota. I mean, I am doing everything I can to get this. Finally get an email. And the manager, 
I said, hey, you know, I got this really odd bounce back. She goes, oh, no, that's what we have up there. The van thinks it's cool. I'm like, oh, well, it makes it more difficult for me. We're running out of time. Can you get back to me? You know, I need to know if I can make this happen. And uh, so by the time we did this whole spiral, weeks had gone by. We finally get the song. We finally get everything locked in there. And it turns out that it's a cover. Cobalt is a publishing, I, and I own this. So Cobalt quoted me an average fee, no name band. And I was very polite and I said, I don't have $50,000 for these movies. <laughs> <laughs> and that was the manager is like, oh, really? I'm like, yeah! I'm like, you know, sorry guys, I'm doing the best I can, but. So anyway, I'm still in the middle of that. I'm hoping to throw it out on us. You need the 50 <laughs> Sorry, I didn't say that. Okay, um, okay, so just quickly, you guys can take a picture of this. And this basically is what I will send out to music companies. And it will say the name of the song, is it this is for a TV show, whatever, who the composition is, who the composer is, um, ownership. So this one I said they have 50% of it, so I have to send it to the other people. How it's being used, what's a little bit of what the scene is. I'm asking for worldwide. I'm asking for it in perpetuity. Uh, how much fee I'm proposing? See, pro rata with Copa means I'll, you're going to share this fee. Pro rata, you're sharing the fee with the other owner. Uh, and it's in the master, so you get the same thing as the master. Does. And then just a little blurb on the phone, and use a little bit more of the notes. Okay, questions. Oh, what about? When you're searching for a song, do you consider if it's union or not union? No. You don't care. So, if you're using a big French Sinatra recording, you're using um, the Mormon classical choir, the big orchestras, they have got union dues. They have union to have to pay. So, if I know that I'm using um, the magic flute, and the director has put in a Sony classical recording of the you know, Chicago Symphony doing it, I know there's going to be dues paid for it. So that's money that gets paid to anyone who's in the union that was on the gig, the recording gig, and they get its health and, and welfare and benefits and da-da-da. It's, like it's like a residual payment they get because the song is being used differently than it was originally you're going in and your recording goes on an album, great. Now that I'm taking that recording, I'm using it in a brand new way, hooked up to my movie, it's a new use, so they get significant, residual union. Significant amount of money sometimes. It could be, yeah, if it's a 95 piece orchestra, I'm going to pay a couple hundred dollars, yeah, I mean it adds up. So what a lot of times what I will do is I say, you're using the Sony records recording, let's see if I can get one from a car. Let me see if I can get one from a non-union, a European version of it. That's just being business smart. Good question. Yeah. Real quick, um, how do how does publishing copywriting work in regards to different languages for lyrics? Like I'm thinking particularly there's a great West Anderson movie called The Life Aquatic that's easy. So there's a character in that movie who's every time you see it, he's playing acoustic versions of David Bowie songs in Portuguese. Okay. So like does that what does that clearance look like? Like that's it's like, the same thing. It's the same thing. Okay. It's the same thing. It's still the original copyright. So it's still yeah, the original IP. You can still do the original copyright, but you can be and you just say, listen, we're singing this in Portuguese. Okay, gotcha. And another thing you should be aware of, well, I am aware of, um, lyrics. So a lot of rap music and a lot of this stuff has explicit language. But if this thing is going on Disney Plus, it's going on here. You have to be careful um, that the lyrics are clean. So a lot of times. Um, big projects. It depends where it is. Um, Netflix is not such a big deal, but some of the networks and some of those. We have to ask for non-explicit versions. So 90% of the record labels do a clean version. Any other questions? Yeah. Um, what's your I'm starting to see any more emergent use uses like like in like NFTs or the metaverse or anything like that. Is, is that? You know, I I don't know about it. I mean, I. I haven't wanted to learn about it because I don't want to become an expert and I don't want to follow it. Sorry. Again, if I was in my 20s, different story. Now I'm like, yeah, let that be somebody else's problem. I don't know about it. Don't, don't ask me. <laughs> don't ask me. Yeah. Uh, for music and for film, you mentioned earlier, for 
always seen with these work in the department has changed the reporting so drastically, to a drastic degree to fit the scene. Do you often have to issue uh, generate good licenses? No. So remember, I'm not the music owner, so I would not have to do that. Here's most editors, and I'm this gentleman, all editors know that they're not supposed to screw up someone else's business. Every single one of them thinks they can do a better job on the recording that's out there. With, as a given fact, they think they are much better. So it's always a, in our license that you have with the music company, you're allowed to edit for time. So I can sit here and say, oh, I didn't need all three and a half minutes of the song. I'm only using a minute of it. That's fine. I can use any portion of the minute of the song, and you're technically not allowed to smush it. A lot of times what we'll do is I will call the record label and say, hey, have you got an instrumental only copy of this report? And a lot of times they do, especially in the movie ones. So, or what they can do is they go back to the original step, they go back to the original, they just strip out the audio, you know, there are vocal tracks and so on. So a lot of times what we'll do is I will ask the record company for an instrumental only track on that recording. I send both to the editing room so the editor can do a proper edit. So again, to accommodate the dialogue or phone conversation for anything that's happening, it'll be like, um, you know, I'll let them do the intro maybe three seconds longer with additional bars, and then it'll go into the song, and then they can, you know, so that's how we kind of accommodate in editing. Um, but I, I let the record company know. And again, if I see it, and I think, okay, that's really good. Oh, okay, so we <laughs> But I am curious, if it is like a not from a big label or any person, do you ever just you know what? Hey, yes, I have, but I always feel kind of dirty doing that. I don't want to. Yeah. It's your music. Yeah. You know, you guys, I respect that. I don't want to sit there and they'll say, oh, can you go back and get this down? So they're like, nah, I don't know if they have it. You know, it's just, yeah. I try not to, because I don't think it's cool. I think we're speaking more and more from like a combination sound design perspective. Like, I think I'm thinking like virgin suicides and air. Like, I feel like they do, Air has a lot of songs, but there are lyrics and one part of the instruments and others. And like, I don't know, it's spending on those or playing with those instrument parts to kind of get their songs. Yeah, they don't. They, they don't they take do. a good part of the song. Uh -huh. And I'll say, hey, just one of them, you know. I have actually done stuff where I've sent it to the label and said, hey, our editor did a copy, did a cut on this, is this okay? Gotcha. And I want to get them to sign off on it, because I don't want someone coming back to me saying, hey, that's a good Good for you because we have yeah. the technology to do this now. Yes. So, um, Helen Kirkland is working on a film where there is some source music on it and some lesson music. And we want to add a string section sure. to enhance it. Yeah. Um, so, my understanding is if you're changing the lesson song, that's a rhythm that works, but can a film composer create a score underneath it and have them kind of the same song? So, here's what's good question. Again. The, your composer is not going to go ahead and copyright the material. But what I will do is, if they have their act, the composer has incorporated, you know, the melody line in his score for 30 seconds. So if I'm playing the song for a minute use, I'll say, and there's an additional 30 seconds of use. So now the use becomes a minute 30. 30 of it is publishing. And, and I was, so the publishing is going to be a minute 30, with the recording I'm only using for a minute. Does that make sense? Okay. So you will, if you have a composer who is going to go ahead and take the rhythm line of whatever, uh, midnight cap, whatever it is. So he's going to take it in there. And I just say, listen, the composer's incorporated into the score. I need an additional length of timing on the publishing approach. It's never been, it's not going to be copyrighted again. It's not going to be anything. And when the composer does his cue sheet, do I have a cue sheet up here? The ah, so this is what you get at the end of the day. And it's basically a snapshot of all the music that you hear in your film. 
So this is what gets sent to ASCAP and BMI. This is how the musicians and songwriters get paid. Not to do with the label. This is how songwriters are going to pay their writer's share. So if you look, um, the composer is Martin Mothersbaugh. And if he had incorporated one of those source cues into there, he would have said, um, it could have been like lying next to each other, it would have said Mark Mother's Law, and then it would have said, but it's not a new copyright. Okay? Mm -hmm. Sure. Is that it? Are we done? Mm -hmm. That's it. Thank you guys. <laughs>